What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Broadhead Review with Chase Cook Outdoors. Today I am talking about the Rocky Mountain Warhead. And uh, I had never heard about these broadheads before. And to be totally honest with you, the only reason that I bought these was because they were 11 bucks on eBay. <laughs> I was kind of browsing just for fun and I just typed in broadheads and these came up. And it's an authentic broadhead. And there are a couple other videos that I watched on these. It's a stainless steel ferrule. This is a 100 grade or 100 grain option. Um, it's an over the top style broadhead. So the way this opens is as it comes in, obviously the tissue is going to catch on these wings right here. And then the blades are going to fold over the top and come completely open. So this has a one and a half inch cut diameter. Blade thickness is 0.0 or is a three thousandths or 0 0.03 blade thickness. So uh, anyway, I thought for 11 bucks, what the heck, I'm really not gonna miss out on much. But uh, I don't know, if you're thinking about shooting one of these, maybe this re review will kind of help you out. Um, I'm gonna weigh these, so we'll see how they do as far as consistency on the scale, how close to 100 grains they are. And then I'm gonna go shoot one of these. And uh, you know, it's a really compact design. So there's no doubt these are gonna fly really good. We'll do a spin test as well, so you guys can see that. And then. I'm just gonna shoot one at probably 40, I don't know, maybe 50 yards for accuracy plus. I'm gonna shoot it through some plywood and uh, just kind of see how the blades hold up when they go through, you know, about a quarter or a half inch uh, piece of plywood. So uh, stick around, let's get outside and shoot one of these. All right, Rocky Mountain Warhead, 40 yard shot. Target's behind me, I have a piece of, I think half inch plywood and you're not gonna be able to see it but there's a little sticker on there that I'm aiming for. But anyway, we're gonna fire one of these down range and uh, see how the blades hold up and what kind of puncture, or excuse me, penetration we get when it goes through. So let's get to it. All right, let's go check it out. All right, so accuracy, I gotta give this thing an NA because you can see this sticker that I shot from 40 yards is super small. You can see the ring and the rubber band is on the shaft, but uh, something I'm seeing here is that the blades definitely did not deploy fully going into the actual wood. I mean, that is less than an inch diameter that the blades are actually cutting on the way in. So anyway, let's get out of this plywood and we'll see what it looks like on the other side. All right, guys, so just pulled it out of the target. Um, the tip on this broadhead actually held up really, really well. Um, there's no damage to the tip whatsoever. It's still nice and sharp. It didn't curve over, it's not curled. Um, the blades though, one thing you noticed, you guys saw when I first shot it, the blades did not open going through the plywood. And being that it is an over the top broadhead, that is kind of something I would expect. That's something that you're gonna have to take into consideration with an over the top style blade like this is that you're probably not gonna get the best entry wound because they want these blades to open up after it's already starting to enter the animal. So you don't dull your blades you know, going through the hide and other things entering in to get into those vitals. So not gonna have the best uh, entry wound and you guys can see that from the plywood, but they deployed once they got into the target. But what is nice though, and I can see their point to this, is that these blades have zero damage on them because they didn't open until pretty much after they had gone through the plywood basically or entered it at least, there's no damage on there. So these things are still razor sharp and that means they're gonna be cutting and doing most of the damage once they're inside the animal. My only critique would be you've got to get a full pass through. You've got to have an exit wound to get that full one and a half inch cut to get a good blood trail on the other side. So for me personally, probably wouldn't shoot an over the top style mechanical blade like this just because of that reason. If you don't get a full pass through, you still got to have a good blood trail. And, uh, but other than that, as far as you know how it held up, you know, if you're looking at these worried about durability, man, it held up really, really good. Accuracy was great. So take that information, digest it, do what you want with it. If you guys like this review of the Rocky Mountain Warhead, get subscribed to the Chase Cook Outdoors channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more reviews just like this one. A lot of versus videos and all those, also just other you know product reviews in general for outdoors and hunting. But uh, comment below, let me know what your thoughts are. Again, if you shot one of these, you know, tell me what's been your feedback or your experience with them. If there's other broadheads that you'd like to see a review on, I'm more than happy to do that. So leave your comments, your questions below and uh, you know I'll get back to you guys. Subscribe, hit that notification bell and stay up to date. I'm Chase, thanks for watching.